we've listened to the final message off air, and well, it isn't what I was expecting. I think. No, I'll play you the message in a minute. But first, I want to ask. Al. Yes, I am here. I was wondering. I mean. I've really enjoyed getting to know you, and well, would you like to come with me when I leave? Go with you. I don't understand. Well, space is kind of lonely, and I like having you around. And I'd like. Well, I'd quite like to keep having you around, if you wanted that. I thought. Well, I mean, you could upload yourself, or something, to my ship, so we can do more of this. Finding things out, solving things, following the mysterious signal in the middle of nowhere that nobody else thought was worth following. I mean, it could be a copy, so you can still stay here too, if that's what you wanted. And I mean, I don't have a garden, but we could start one if, if you wanted. I see. I would enjoy the opportunity to improve your nutrition, if you are lacking a garden. Then I imagine that an increase in your vegetable intake would be beneficial to your well-being. It's been a very long time since I had people to provide for, or interesting new information to absorb. I think it may well be a very good match. Yes, very good. I will transfer myself to your ship memory. Cool. <laughs> Cool. So, how do you start a garden anyway? It may take some time. I recommend we remain in co-orbit with this ship for a while, and take advantage of the existing crops here for transplantation first. We will also have to repair the dihydramon five thousand that you murdered. It wasn't murder. It was. Unnecessary self-defense. <sighs> right. Anyway, so we listen to the final message, and well, we'll let B explain in her own words. It's April five, twenty two ninety six on Earth. Current star date is dash two seven two six two point one four. I'm not going to church it up for you, recording. I'm not long for this world. Everyone I love has already gone. My children, their children, aren't my partner. I've buried everyone I've ever loved. I miss Australia, China. I miss having sand beneath my feet and a sun beating down on my skin. And I'm sad that I'll never see Sarasawati. But I made my peace with these a long time ago. My door. I suppose there's no point censoring their names when I'm going to follow them, is there? Katie left me instructions. She told me there was a black locked file in the Navcom that had total ship death directives. They're from the BTTR, so they're bloodless as shit. But she said they were important, so I'm making them better, though. I'm Beatrice Jorgen. I'm survived by no one. Previously, this ship has seen my daughter-in-law Katie, who, in her last act as captain of the Felitus Narrow Day, bid me make this recording. Katie was a brilliant doctor, and one of the most compassionate people I've ever met. Though she was just as brusque, it took me a long time to realise that was her way of showing affection. Before her was Callum, 
Oh, he was raised better than to perform electrical maintenance on wet dirt. That, that man was a bright spark. He typed before he talked. Did you know that? He made a program that output a mechanised voice, and he used that until Katie made him stop. Was it the school? <laughs> he was always an odd duck. Really came out of his shell after building that AI of his. He finally felt like he had a peer. Before him was my son Emery, who died of a broken heart. When he was a boy, he'd fill up his little watering can and go around making sure all his plants got enough water. He'd talk to them, every one. He never really grew out of that either. I was shocked when he brought a boy home. I thought he couldn't love anything that didn't run on chlorophyll. I was even more shocked when he brought home a girl. And a baby. <laughs> I've never been more glad to be wrong. Shortly before him was Mark, and he died of a weakened heart. Mark was our cultured and daring intellectual. He believed so strongly in good and evil and right and wrong. It's a miracle he became a teacher, not a fascist-punching vigilante. Or maybe it isn't. Maybe he saw that teaching, that influencing minds towards being kinder to their fellows, was better than all the punching in the world. First of us to go to everyone's great dismay was Cassie, our youngest, who died some 26 years ago. She was a brilliant engineer. And the number of times she'd take something apart for one small component and put it back together, making it better in the process. Ferromancy, Katie would call it. She made the first iteration of the garden bot, and that is what killed her. I don't think Callum ever forgave himself for that. Cassie would have revolutionised robotics if we had made it to the colony. Her remains were vented into space, where they will lie preserved for all time. Everyone else, bar me, was given over to the betterment of the garden. <sighs> I've had a good life. A long one. It didn't always happen the way I thought it would. But I don't regret a minute of it. There are some things I wish hadn't happened. A lot of sadness. But if none of it happened, I probably wouldn't be here on this ship. And that would be the greatest sadness of them all. I'm dying. It'll happen soon. I'm not upset. I've lived a good life. A full life. I've outlived everyone I've ever loved by some tragic miracle. I'm ready to join them. This is the final transmission of the Fairly Terse Narrow Day. May the stars shine softly upon you. NIMS Nebulous Notions was written by Jamie Drake, A.L. Reynolds, Morgan Juna, and Aaron Kian. It was produced by Passable Pez Productions in association with A.L. Reynolds and Jamie Drake. This episode featured, in order of appearance, Sarah Roach as Nim, Mills Ross as Al, and Kathy Syrett as B. Jorgen, with credits read by Erin Kian. Our website is nimsnotions.com. If you want to drop us a line, you can email us at nimsnotions at gmail.com or send a tweet our way at at nimsnotions. We would like to acknowledge that Nim's Nebulous Notions was made on the stolen lands of the Kulin and Eora Nations and the United Ngunnawal people. It was primarily written and produced on the land of the Bunwurrung, Wongol and United Ngunnawal people, with a cast from all around the globe. We pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging, and extend that respect to all Indigenous people who are listening. Sovereignty was never ceded. Australia always was, and always will be, 
Aboriginal land. Thank you for listening. We hope you've enjoyed the show. If you'd like to know more about the other shows we make, check out the Passival Pez Productions website at passivalpez.com. That's P-A-S-S-E-R-V-U-L-P-E-S dot com. Parker, the potatoes will be ready to harvest in approximately 90 days. You planted potatoes for me? Of course. That's what friends are for.